If this capital history of our progress teaches us anything, it is that man in his quest for knowledge and progress is determined and cannot be deterred. The exploration of space will go ahead, whether we join in it or not. And it is one of the great adventures of all time. And no nation which expects to be the leader of other nations can expect to stay behind in this race for space. And welcome to Re-Entry, an orbital simulator. This is an early access flight simulator that puts you inside of the cockpit of a real spacecraft, namely the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo spacecraft, which will allow us to legitimately fly these spacecraft as they were flown in real life with all of the knobs, switches, and dials you could wrap your brain around. And let me tell you, the Apollo cockpit my gosh, it is overwhelming, and it is a lot to learn. Now, this is a game that was voted for on my Discord. There was a few options, and this was the one that got the most votes. And considering where we are right now in For All Kerbal Kind actually flying Mercury flights, it made the most sense to do this video now because we're going to start off with actually flying a Mercury capsule. We're going to be strapped inside that tin can, and it's going to be a lot of fun. This is a flight simulator that comes with manuals, a game manual, and then flight manuals for every cockpit and everything we can do up to landing on the moon and even mission control. So what I think would be really fun is to actually cooperate with some people and run an entire mission control and flight at the same time with a group of people. That would be absolutely fantastic. If that's something you're legitimately interested in, let me know in the comment of this video or in my Discord because, man, this is going to be a lot of fun, I think. But starting off here with Mercury, we've got ourselves a 91-page manual here with all sorts of useful information and really, really cool diagrams. I've gone through and skimmed through most of this. I think I have a good understanding of the spacecraft because something the game offers here is an academy. You go through lessons for each situation you'll find yourself in all the way from pre-launch to re-entry. And then you do an exam, you just do a full mission by yourself. And another thing the game does to help you out is while you're actually in the cockpit, you will have access to a whole load of checklists. And what's even cooler about those is you can hit run on these checklists and it will highlight the different buttons in the cockpit that you actually need to press. So if you don't want to memorize everything, you can do it that way. Personally, I'm gonna do my best to memorize the spacecraft and not have to run those checklists but I will fall back on them if need be. So there's a few different ways you can play. There's a free play, there's challenges, there's historical missions, but what I think we're gonna do for this series is play through the campaigns. Quick Start is sort of a tutorial, so I think we'll skip that one. I played it already. It basically just teaches you how to operate the simulation. No, we are going to start with Campaign 1, Orbital Survival. Are we gonna survive? Are we? I'm not too sure, but there's only one way to find out. So without further ado, let's start episode one of Reentry, an orbital simulator. Campaign one, orbital survival, the dream of space. For generations, we have been gazing up on the stars, telling tales of the ancient constellation that builds up the night sky. These fixed sources of distant light, some millions of light years away, have been the basis for navigators across the world for centuries. Mesmerized by the unknowns and vastness of space, philosophers and scientists had dedicated lifetimes of work to answer its existence. Recent developments in engineering, technology, and research has unlocked the possibilities of answering many of the things that once was just a dream, traveling to space. Modified intercontinental ballistic missiles can be used to launch artificial satellites to space. 
On the 4th of October 1957, the Soviet Union successfully launched a satellite named Sputnik 1 into orbit around the Earth, becoming the first artificial Earth satellite. It was a simple and lightweight satellite containing a radio transmitter. It transmitted a signal for three weeks before its batteries died, and re-entered and burned up in the atmosphere two months later. Surprised by this, the United States created what would become NASA to expedite the US space exploration efforts. Explorer 1 was successfully launched on January 31st in 1958 on a Juno launch vehicle. A cosmic ray sensor on board was used to, for the first time, detect the Van Allen belts. It provided data for almost four months before the batteries died, but remained in orbit for about 12 years before re-entering the atmosphere. With the launch of Sputnik 1, the competition of achieving firsts in spaceflight capabilities between the USSR and the US had started. The US was lagging behind, and crewed spaceflight became the next goal. Project Mercury is the first official space program with the target of putting a man in orbit with a safe return. After a long selection process with brutal tests, we finally received the phone call congratulating us for being selected as one of the astronauts to fly the Mercury capsule. Your comrade Patrick Rad from the test pilot squadron has also made the team. The Mercury spacecraft consists of a pressurized crew compartment with room for one astronaut, right here. The retro pack used to return from orbit, back here. A heat shield used to survive an entry through the atmosphere, underneath us right here. A recovery compartment where the landing chutes are located in front of us. An antenna section used for communication and scanners for spacecraft orientation in the front as well. And a launch escape system used to safely take the capsule away from a failing launch during an abort. As the Mercury spacecraft we all know and love. And here it's just telling us that we should do the Academy missions before doing this campaign mission. And I have gone ahead and done that. So, April 1st, 1961. We are targeting a launch early in May. You are selected as the astronaut who will be the first human in history to make the journey into space. I wonder if this is gonna be on a redstone or an atlas. Well, let's find out by hitting interior inspection. We are only weeks away from our first crewed launch and you will be the first person to ever travel to space. Exciting. In preparation for the upcoming launch, the backup crew of your upcoming flight will need to run a few rehearsals. To prepare for this, you will need to enter the capsule to set up the electrical system and perform a complete interior inspection. Okay, preparing cockpit state. Whoa, all right, we are here. And something you'll notice immediately, other than the fact that, well, all of our lights are turned off and we're in a cold and dark cockpit, is that the camera is tracking my head movements. I'm using track IR, so just uh, bits of my head moving is all it takes to look around, it's kind of cool. Good morning, N9, this is Capcom. Hope you had your coffee. You'll be flipping a lot of switches before lunch. Sure thing, Patrick. Are you all ready there? I'm eager to get started here. Yeah, just waiting for Bob, who had forgotten his badge. A oh, classic Bob, am I right? He just entered the room, so any second now. Anyways, if I knew you, they were to choose you as the first human in spaceflight history to travel to space, I would sabotage some of your tests back at the Academy. Hey, that's not very nice. You know I was a better astronaut than you, so even doing that, you wouldn't stand a chance. But hey, you'll be second in space. Haha, <laughs> I love the banter here. This is Flight Testing Intercom. Do you read? I do read. In fact, I am reading this message right now. Roger. Loud and clear, Flight. We will start rehearsal now as Bob is ready. Finally got his badge, I guess. This is Capcom. You heard him. Let's get this rehearsal started. Roger. Let's get Aurora ready. There's a reason that's called Aurora. In the game, it lets you name yourself and it lets you name your spacecraft. So I am, of course, N9 Gaming, and my spacecraft, no matter what I'm in at the moment, is called Aurora. That's, that's pretty neat. Roger. You might have noticed that your cabin is in a cold and dark state. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Use your flashlight. You can set the cabin lights to both. All right, you can see a button is highlighted right there. And that would say, if I can zoom in here, cabin lights. It's a bit difficult to actually get down there, but one click and we have lights on in the cabin. Not bad. Something that uh, is very interesting is if we click the lights, we can change those to red. And I'm not exactly sure. It looks kind of sci-fi in here if I do that. Well, let's just turn them back on to normal. Just wanted to test if that worked. 
All right, that said both, Roger, your electrical power sources are all offline except for a connection to an external power source currently powering the capsule. Right, the entire uh, launch complex, I believe. Let's start by bringing your internal power sources online. The external sources will be used even if you connect your internal batteries to the DC bus. Roger. The six internal batteries can be connected using the switches on the sides of your chair, starting with the main battery, uh, and then it wants me to go back and forth, back and forth. Basically, there are six switches right back here. One, three, isolated. It doesn't want me to do this in order, but I couldn't be bothered to do it in order because it's so hard to get my head to actually whip around enough to click those buttons. But there we are. All right, those six are all down. That's battery one. Uh, that's battery number two. Battery number three. Standby battery number one. Standby battery number two and our isolated battery bus. All have been selected. All internal electric power sources connected to their respective buses. Roger, open the mission pad and run through the interior inspection checklist. Press run on the UI, but go through the checklist manually line by line. All right, Roger that. So it's telling me to run this inspection. By the way, these are all the checklists for Mercury. There's quite a lot, but it only gets more with the Gemini capsule and then the Apollo capsule and Lem. Oh, there's gonna be so many and that's gonna be real interesting. But the only thing we're really focusing on here is uh, interior inspection. So, yeah, we're gonna hit run. I'm not exactly sure if it wants me to hit run or not, but I, I, think, it's, I, I think it must have. This might be a tutorial thing, it might not. It's good practice to follow the checklist manually to verify steps and get familiar with them. Checklists are your main tools while in the cockpit. Roger that. All right. So, uh, I think we're going to hit M to take this off. All right. Phase shifter to true. Okay, so this is just running us through turning on all of our fuses. When we flip them up, they're in the number one position. When we flip them down, they're in the number two position. And in the middle, the fuses are entirely off. Now it wants me to turn... Uh, so, oh, I don't know what I clicked there. Environment control on, suit fan on, retro jettison on, retro main, retro man, retro manual, uh, programmer. Programmer is, uh, like, does our sequencer stuff here. So this is basically some more fuses right here for some more things. So all of our fuses are on. This should be set to arm. Our retro delay should be set to instantaneous. Uh, that's our photo lights. I actually don't know what photo lights does. And then this is our TLM low frequency. We'll set that to on. And it just like flashed through here. All our handles are in, our rings are in, our guards are on. Everything is set correctly. So we can just go ahead and confirm that. All right, control fuel check. Our fuel is at 100%, proceed. Rate of descent is at zero. That's good because we're on the pad. Altimeter says zero. That's good because we're on the pad. Uh, time of day is this time, I suppose, 7.05. Uh, and this is saying 7.05. Yep, that is accurate. And time from launch is zero. Uh, hold on, let's just proceed. Verify time to retrograde set as mission requirements. Okay. Um, Honestly, I couldn't tell you what that is. It's set to four hours, so I guess we'll just leave it at four hours. Rate indicators at zero degrees per second. That is accurate. All right, pitch is at 90 degrees. Yaw is at 180 degrees. And roll is at zero degrees. That is correct. I, I thought that it said Atlas up there. We, we might be on the Atlas. Oh, that's awesome. All right, we have to remove this cover from the time zero. We'll click this button if the clock does not start running automatically on launch. That's going to be really important to do. All right, proceed. Cabin air pressure is at 16 PSIA. It's probably higher than that, actually. Our cabin air temperature is at, what, 250 degrees? That's, that's terrible. Is that accurate? <laughs> that seems really, really, really high. Uh, air temp, sensor temp is, uh, sensor temp doesn't appear to be doing anything unless it's just, like, even higher than the gauge allowed. Um, I'm just gonna proceed on those. I guess they look okay. I don't know. Our oxygen quantity are both full. Good, good, good. Uh, we're gonna want this set to normal, I guess. All right. 
DC volts indicator should agree with Blockhouse. Uh, I'm, a, I'm not exactly sure 100% what that all means. So if we go into here and go to our DC volts, just our, our, our DC volts knob should be at man. Request battery. Oh, yeah, it says it right there. Request battery check. Okay. In order to request a battery check, uh, shoot, I don't actually remember the button. Well, I do know you can hit this to actually get that up, but I don't remember the button that's actually supposed to get that up. I don't see a uh, request battery check option. Wait, wait. Battery check. Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. Everything is at 100. Understood. So uh, that means, oh, it's C. I found the key. C turns that off and on. Awesome. So everything should be at 100%. Uh, that seems OK. Oh, we're just going to proceed with that. The ammeter, uh, that went away, so I don't even see that anymore. DC amps indicator zero. Yep, that's accurate. All right. ACS, we're gonna set that to normal. Uh, we're set standby battery to on. We're gonna set the uh, isolated battery to standby. And now that should up our AC voltage to 150, which that's a little bit, no, 115, 115. That is accurate. All right, that's good. That's nominal, perfect. Now we got our radio things down here. UHF, we're gonna select that to high power, I believe that says. Uh, we're gonna change transmit to off. And I guess this is good on ground command. And now we are toggling on our alert tones for our master alarms. That's what these are. If there's an issue, these are gonna blare red and they're gonna blare on an alarm tone. It's gonna be very loud. And flipping one of those acknowledges it. Let's you turn off the tone because yeah, it's gonna be loud. Verify that all switch fuses are in the number one position. That uh, looks like they're all in the number one position. All right, we're gonna proceed with that one as well. I just skipped through a bunch of things here. Inverter temp set to two. Uh, should we set it to, no, it's, maybe it was saying two to the left. Uh, I'm pretty sure that all of these should be set to the arrow. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna hit Roger. Uh, maneuver right, 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 right. So this is the switch that we need to turn on to actually have the uh, autopilot control the vessel. All right, so we ran through that checklist, perfect. So yep, that's it, that's interior inspection complete. The backup crew will soon be ready, so let's wrap. Next time we'll be here, we will create history. Think about it, unless you get the measles or something, <laughs> you'll be the first person to travel to space in nine gaming. All right, roger that. And that'll be all for the first installment of re-entry. Our next flight is a suborbital hop on the Mercury spacecraft. Yeah, that's right, we're actually flying it next episode. I've actually already flown it, but I don't want these videos to drag on too long, so we'll do that one in the next one. So until then, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and peace out.